Well, now to the gut bacteria of the Irish rugby team. A team of scientists from Chagask have been examining them as part of an effort to see how the gut bacteria of the very fit behave. Well, to find out why they've been doing this, I'm joined now from Cork by Dr. Paul Cotter, the principal investigator. Dr. Cotter, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, first of all, will you tell me exactly what you have been doing here? Um, this was a study that was carried out with researchers at University College Cork and at Chiagas Moor Park. Uh, we're part of the Elementary Pharmabiotic Centre and we're very interested in gut health um, and particularly how the microbes in our gut contribute to their health and disease. And in this particular study we wanted to see, um, in particular I suppose we're studying how diet impacts on the microbes in our gut, those bacteria. And the rugby team are very extreme examples in terms of the diet they consume and we want to use diet as a way of improving people's gut microbiota in the future. But in addition to looking at diet, we also, for the first time, were able to look at the impact of exercise on these important bacteria and how they contribute to our health. So what did you find when you looked at their, their diet, their exercise levels, and then the, their bacteria in the gut? Okay, so the diet of these individuals, as you might expect, is quite unusual um, in that it's, it's quite extreme. They consume large amounts of calories, large amounts of protein. Um, with regards to exercise, it was very difficult to determine or to come up with a quantification to compare the exercise levels of these individuals relative to our control group, who are just people in the general public. We couldn't just ask them how much gardening do they do every week and so on. So instead we used a, a different marker. We used an enzyme called creatine kinase, or CK, which is present in muscle. And when people undergo extreme exercise, they release CK from those muscles, um, and we can then detect the amount of CK in blood and the amount of CK in the athletes was extremely high, it was off the charts relative to people in, in the general public. And, and so, so that was a marker to say they took a, an awful lot of exercise if you like. What was the impact exactly. on the gut bacteria then? So the, we, we very frequently look at the microbiota as we call it of different individuals. We've looked at elderly people, infants, people in the general public but the, the rugby players were extremely different, a very unique group of individuals and in that the diversity of their microbes was much higher than that uh, in, in the general public. And why and do you think that was? Uh, we, we, we link it back I think particularly to exercise number one and second diet but in particular the component of their diet protein or even more specifically we think it's the whey protein that they have consumed in their diet that is driving this. And is it a good thing to have a, a lot of variety in the gut bacteria and why? What does it do to your overall health? It's it, very much so. Um, I suppose the term diversity comes from people who study environments. So if you think of something that has a high diversity, you're thinking of, say, the, the Amazon rainforest, where there's lots of different plants and shrubs and, and animals, and a low diversity type environment would be the Sahara Desert. Uh, so in, if somebody has a high diversity, they're much, their gut microbes are much more resilient, and if they take antibiotics or are exposed to stress or have an illness, their, mi their gut microbes recover much more rapidly and flourish. Um, people with low microbial diversity are more likely to have things like inflammatory bowel disease, uh, to be obese, to suffer from allergies, and there's a number of other um, diseases and uh, syndromes that have been linked with low diversity in your so microbiota. So what's the take-home from this, Paul? I mean, obviously we should all be doing exercise, we kind of know that already. Is there other take-home yes. from this? Well, we're trying to develop new interventions that will allow us to change people's microbiota, people who have an undesirable microbiota or a low diversity, maybe over a shorter period of time. So everybody can't are trained to the same extreme as the rugby players. But we're actually carrying out a study at the moment now where we're giving people in the general public who, who don't exercise at all or haven't done so recently, we'll give them the whey protein. Um, in another group, we'll get them to exercise. And in a third group, we'll do both. And we'll see if we can give them the good microbiota but over a shortened period of time rather than after years of training. Which will improve their overall health. It's a really interesting exactly. study. Paul, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Cork this morning. No problem.